Okay guys, so we're gonna start things off by removing these uh, four screws here. We're gonna carefully lift it up and see what the cables are. You can see cables here. And then we're going to carefully, very carefully lift it over like this. Just lift it up. Make sure these cables are not strained. Now I'm going to do a bit of a close up on the connectors so you can see them clearly here. Now try to remember, or actually even better, uh, take a picture of these connectors so you remember which way the cable sit. You remove these connectors by lifting the plastic lock upwards. So carefully lift it upwards like this and then pull the cable out like this. Pull the cable out, just lift it up and pull the cable out. And there you have it. The next step is to remove the motherboard itself. And you do that by removing these five screws. And once the screws are removed, uh, carefully remove the motherboard. Now, it might stick a little bit, uh, but don't worry about it. Just move it like this on the sides and it should come out. Now you will probably see a lot of white stuff here and here. I cleaned mine already, uh, but yeah, that's what makes it stick. So there you have it. This is your motherboard. Okay. Uh, so first we're gonna check whether our motherboard's motherboard is actually working. And to do that, we're gonna take uh, this cable and plug it in here. That's the wrong side. There you go. Make sure it's properly attached. And uh, the other end, Is going to be is going to be connected to uh, a, a male to male USB cable and then onto your laptop. Okay, so now I'm going to plug it in and pay attention to this part of the motherboard. Okay, so the cable goes in and now you can see this little blue light to be on. Let me move it closer so you can see it. There you go. Now this tells us the motherboard is fine. Uh, now I'm gonna walk you through the uh, actual method of recovering your head unit uh, using a test point. First, you will locate your uh, folder where you have your backup and it should have uh, boot one, ROM user, preloader, scatter, and memory map uh, files. So I'm sure you have that. Now, uh, you're gonna start SP Flash Tools as administrator, there. Then you're gonna choose your scatter file in that folder. Then you're gonna go onto the Format tab. So now that your computer is ready, we're gonna move on to the motherboard. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to locate the two test point pads that you're gonna short. Let me move this a little bit closer. And you can see them here, your test points. The whole uh, process consists of three steps. Uh, the first one is to uh, push start button uh, 
in Esper Flash tool. After that, you need to use your tweezers and place them on the two test points on the motherboard. No need to push hard, just so they make contact. And while holding the tweezers down, with your other hand, insert the USB cable into your computer. And then keep hold the test points until the format flash is done, which should be within a second. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing, only now that our flash is completely clean, we're gonna proceed with uploading the new bootloader that you have in your backup. Now we're going to proceed with uploading the bootloader file uh, that should be named boot1. The procedure is exactly the same, only this time around, when you're in SP Flash tools, you push Control alt v to activate advanced mode. Then you go to the menu and pick right. You insert the correct details on the address and make sure that the right uh, memory block is chosen. Click right, push down the test points and while keeping the test points down, insert the USB cable and keep holding your tweezers on those test pads up until the boot one upload is completed. Once it's successfully completed, you do not need to do the test point method again when you are to install new firmware or import your user ROM file. And this concludes the test point method. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to check out my other videos and visit my post on XDA forums. Thanks guys.